Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and another episode of Dear Nero, which of course is the weekly series here on my channel where subscribers send me in fan mail and or fan questions. I had to ask go and answer them. Why is Dear Nero going up on Thursday? You may be asking yourselves. Usually we've done Dear Nero on Wednesdays. We do it every Wednesday. We have over 150 episodes of it. It always goes up on Wednesday. What gives Nero? Why'd you push it back a day? Well, simply it's because of the Black Ops 3 beta. It's really just been consuming all of my time. I've been just been playing the beta. While well, I'm not playing the beta, I'm making videos of the beta and of Black Ops 3. And it just has been taking up a ridiculous amount of time. Like, for example, I think I put in like 10 hours of playtime into the Black Ops 3 beta alone yesterday. So it's pretty pretty insane. It's definitely very time consuming. I thought it would just be easier to push back Dear Nero one day. That way I can get the videos I made yesterday out yesterday and start working on some other videos, which we'll be seeing later on tonight as well as tomorrow. And yeah, it just it's really time consuming, guys. I'm really enjoying the beta, though. It's been a whole lot of fun. So yeah, this week's Dear Nero is going to be coming one day late, but still, I hope you guys all enjoy it and hope you guys all enjoy the Black Ops 3 beta footage that we're going to have for this week's gameplay. Let's hop into the questions here because I feel as though we have a very good list of questions. I'm going to hop into the first one where he's going to write Dear Nero. With the Black Ops 3 beta being released for PlayStation 4, how are you finding it? Do you think it was a good idea, and do you think that it should be done by Sledgehammer Games and Infinity Ward in their respective years? Thanks, Black Scarecrow. I have really been enjoying my time with the Black Ops 3 beta so far. It's been a lot of fun, actually. It's the first beta we've had in Call of Duty since 2008, and it has not disappointed. I had a prediction that this thing was going to be really more of a glorified demo, but it, it kind of is that. I think it is kind of a demo in a way, and I've had a lot of fun actually just playing around with the guns. There's a lot of guns for us to unlock here in the beta. There's only three maps for us to play on, but I feel as though all three of the maps are pretty fun. I think they're all pretty good. I've played all the game modes except for Capture the Flag. I've never been a big Capture the Flag fan, but I've played all the other game modes in the beta so far, and I've really been enjoying them. I've been having fun trying to experiment with the kill streaks a bit, but keep in mind the kill streaks, a lot of them are actually locked. You can't actually unlock them because at the time of me recording this video, the level cap for the beta is level 28, and that's where I'm at right now. I'm actually up to level caps. So I've been playing ridiculously. I think I've put in like 15 almost 20 hours worth of game time already into the beta and um but all the, most, a lot of the score streaks are actually locked but if you run the care package you can actually get some of the kill streaks that are locked by levels because keep in mind the max level is 28 for us right now so all the ones that you unlock after level 28 you can't play with but if you run the care package you have a chance to get some of those kill streaks so i've been running the care package a lot and trying out a lot of the kill streaks like i got the hater the h a t r which is like the equivalent of a blackbird i ended up getting that thing that thing was fantastic it was so much fun to having that up in the air i've just been really enjoying my time with the beta. Do I think that Sledgehammer Games and Infinity Board should have a beta for theirs? Definitely. They should definitely do that because one, it's it, it's going to build hype for the game, right? Biggest part of it, it's going to build hype for the game. Two, to a lesser extent, it's going to provide good beta testing and that people can be like, hey, this gun seems overpowered. Hey, this gun seems underpowered. Hey, there's this exploit on this map. Hey, this thing's not working properly. But I haven't seen a whole lot of like actual feedback that way and, and for the Black Ops 3 beta. I do have some criticisms for the game. Like, for example, I feel as though the Weevil, as much as I like the Weevil, I feel as though it could definitely stand up a bit of a damage buff. I think the Razorback right now might be a little bit too strong at some machine gun, but it might be too early to tell. Like, uh, there's some weapon balance issues, I would say, but again, that could all just be subjective, and it could change game to game based upon the connection and what attachments they're running. And plus, we've only just had the game for a couple of days. Maybe it's too early to make assumptions as to whether or not a certain gun is overpowered or underpowered. So right now, the game itself is really just serving as a demo and a hype train for Black Ops 3 itself. And what's kind of cool about it, too, is the fact that they made us pre-order to actually get into the beta, which means the pre-order number Numbers for this are just going to go through the roof, which means people are actually going to go ahead and buy this game. It's going to be a big thing, right? It's definitely going to be a big thing. And if they actually see an increase in sales, but no doubt they've seen a giant increase in pre-orders, right? The pre-order numbers for Black Ops CR are going to be through the roof as compared to previous Call of Duty games. I can guarantee it just because of the beta and people, all the people wanting access to the beta. So if they see an increase in sales as a result of this beta, I can definitely see Activision, the higher ups, the people that are above Sledgehammer, above Infinity Ward, and above Treyarch. I can see Activision saying, hey, we're going to have a beta for Call of Duty every single year now because it's going to put it's going to push our pre-order sales and therefore it's going to push our overall sales of the game as well. So I can definitely see them doing this, but at the same time, it gives the fans a chance to kind of play with the play around with the game before it even comes out, several months before it even comes out. It builds up so much hype for the game and actually just makes us want to play with it. And I think if a game is bad, like here, this is my own personal opinion. If you take a game like Ghost, which initially it was pretty fun, but over overall it just got really stale very quickly. 
I feel as though if Ghosts would have had a beta, they could have gotten a lot of feedback from that beta, and then maybe Ghosts would have been changed. Like, for example, the SATCOM. Right? I don't think any of us really like the SATCOM. I, I, I'm sure there's one guy out there that likes the SATCOM, but compared to a UAV, I think we all wanted the UAV back over the SATCOM. And I think with that feedback, and if they would have had beta, then perhaps Call of Duty Ghosts would have gotten rid of the SATCOM idea it just brought back in the normal UAV. Maybe they would have changed around some other things as well. You never know. So I definitely think a beta is a good thing. I would love to see Sledgehammer and Infinity Ward do that when, uh, when it's their turn to make a new Call of Duty game. Next question, he is going to write, Dear Nero, what is your favorite Pokemon game besides the originals? Hope you have a great day slash night. Green Jose from Texas. So my favorite Pokemon games obviously are Red, Blue, and Yellow. Those are the ones I grew up on in the Kanto region and playing that stuff. It was so much fun. I have such fond memories of that area, which is why I still go back to this day, like playing on emulators and stuff. Go back and just do like speed runs or just run through for fun. Like uh, occasionally I'll just go back like Pokemon Yellow and I'll just like speed through it because on emulators, of course, you can make the speed go ridiculously fast and beat the game and like an hour if you wanted to like you can go really 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 fast just by holding down the space bar or you can take it slow wherever you want to do but those are definitely my favorite ones but your question is what are my favorite ones besides the original games uh, basically, Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3 were my favorites because those are the ones I actually played growing up. I have played, you know, Gen 4, I have played X and Y, but I just, I don't like them as much, I suppose, as when I was a kid and there was, like, so much mystery to it all and, like, it was just so interesting learning about all this stuff for the first time. So, uh, definitely Gen 1 is my favorite, but if I had to pick a second favorite, probably Gen 2, like, Gold and Silver, I played that a lot. Gold and Silver were fantastic, as well as Crystal, I believe, was also Gen 2. And then Gen 3, which was Ruby and Sapphire, yeah, I, I didn't play as much, like, picture like the majority of my playtime was in Gen 1, and then there, a decent amount of playtime was Gen 2, then a smaller amount of it was Gen 3, then like Gen 4 and 5, so I barely played at all, right? So Gen 3, I probably played at least out of the first three, but I still enjoyed it. You know, I still I had Pokemon Sapphire, and I still thought it was fun, and actually did a whole playthrough of Pokemon Ruby on my Let's Play channel, just kind of going back for nostalgia's sake and seeing the seeing the world again. Like it's fun, it's fun going back to some of those games. So yeah, those are uh, my favorite ones, I suppose. I still say Gen 2 is my favorite besides Gen 1, just because I played Pokemon Silver so much. Like, I played so much of Silver, and yeah, a lot of good memories there. Finding Suicune for the first time, or Suicune, however you want to pronounce it. The other thing was, like, my favorite legendary for a long time. I'm like, it's an ice dog thing! He's so cool! And, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'd definitely say uh, Gen 2 is probably my favorite uh, Pokemon games besides the original ones. Next question, he's going to write, Dear Nero, who is your favorite Call of Duty Zombies character? Mine is Takiao. Keep up the great work from Nico. So Nico, short question, short answer. My favorite Zombies character is definitely Tank Dempsey. He's my favorite to play as. I think Nikolai is probably my second favorite one to play as. Like if I'm playing Zombies and then you spawn in and your character says a piece of dialogue and it kind of gives you an idea of which character you're playing as. I'm, I'm, I'm excited when I'm Tank because I think Tank's, the stuff he says is just hilarious to me. And then Nikolai is also pretty funny. Takio can be funny, but I don't think he's nearly as funny as Tank or Nikolai or Rick Toffin. So yeah, Tank's definitely my favorite with Nikolai being a second Probably Rick Toffin as third, and then Taki would probably be my fourth. So that's interesting. The one you say is your favorite is probably my least favorite out of the original Zombies cast, anyway. Next question. He is going to write, Dear Nero, now that you've had your PlayStation 4 for about three or four weeks, which console do you prefer? I know that the PlayStation 4 is, quote-unquote, statistically better. I want to know your opinion. Michael from the Music City. So, Michael, I'm noticing you have been on, like, three or four straight episodes of Dear Nero. Michael from the Music City sends some very good questions every single week. So, I have had my PlayStation PlayStation 4 for about a month now. Which console do I prefer? I, I guess I really don't have a preference, to be perfectly honest. I play whatever console it kind of like suits my needs for that day. For example, what's that? New DLCs out for Advanced Warfare? Well, I guess I'm hopping on the Xbox One. Oh, what's that? We're going to have an open lobby with some subs on the PS4? Well, let's hop on the PS4. Black Ops 3 Bays on the PS4? Let's hop on the PS4. Oh, let's go play some other stuff that I already have from Xbox One? Let's go hop on the Xbox One. Like, it's all really about suiting my needs, and I guess I kind of like them the same right now. I will say, uh, I do think I like the PS4 interface a bit better. I am just I hate I detest the Xbox One interface. I do not like it at all. I love the 360 interface. I hate the Xbox One interface. I feel as though the PS4 one is a lot more clean. I think it has a lot of nice customization to it. And I think it's pretty easy to navigate. Like as somebody that hasn't had a PlayStation since the PlayStation 2, 
right? I, I picked up on the PS4 interface very quickly, whereas to this day, I'm still not fully sold on the Xbox One interface, and I can't navigate it perfectly like I can the 360 version. So, yeah, I think the PS4 has a better interface. Uh, which game looks better? I mean, they look honestly about the same to me. I mean, you look at most games, like the PS4 would be like 1080p, then the Xbox One would be like 900p, but scaled up. Like, it's very close. It's kind of hard to see that difference there. In terms of the controller, um, I like the PlayStation controller a lot more than the PS3 controller. I did dabble with the PS3 controller a little bit, and it felt very, very small, like it was designed for little Japanese girl hands. And uh, yeah, I didn't like the PS3 controller, but the PS4 one, it's a bit bigger. I like it a lot, as well as I also like the Xbox One controller. Which controller do I like the most? Probably the Xbox One, I would say because I'm more comfortable with having the left stick being up as compared to being down. Like, that was something I took a little bit of getting used to, but I've been playing so much of the Black Ops 3 beta that it's, like, it's like natural, second nature to me uh, to use the PS4 controller. So, I like both consoles. I don't think I necessarily have a favorite. It's just really which console is going to best suit that day and what I'm trying to do that day is uh, probably my favorite console of the day. But, yeah, it definitely switches back and forth. I think they're both pretty good consoles. I don't think one is necessarily much better than the other one. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, I'm going to Six Flags this weekend, and I was wondering if you enjoy roller coasters and or thrill rides. I personally love them. Keep up the great work. Jordan from New York. So, Jordan, I hope you have fun at Six Flags this weekend. That's awesome. Do I like roller coasters? Do I like thrill rides? Do I like maybe theme parks and stuff like that? So, we don't actually have a lot of parks around here, but I have been to a few. I have been to Six Flags. Uh, we have a place called Waldemere, which is like 40 minutes away, which is like a way small, scaled-down version of Six Flags. Like, I do like them, but uh, it's just I don't go to them very often. I'm not much of a spinny guy. I will say that. I'm not much of a spin guy. Like, if your ride is all about spinning, like, going around in circles really, really fast, chances are I'm not going to like it. Like, if you guys ever actually been... Uh, they have these, are like, my county fairs and stuff like that. Maybe you guys have had that as well. But there is, there's, like, this ride where you go inside it, right? And they close up all the doors. And then you basically you lean up against the wall. Then they start spinning. You spin so fast that basically you end up sticking to the wall. And you just kind of start hovering there, sticking to the wall, because that's how it works. And it's just kind of a fun little thing. But at the same time, I hate spinny i don't like spin rides but if it's like a roller coaster i think that stuff's fun obviously i don't like heights very much so if it's a super high roller coaster like there are some roller coasters i'm sure you guys can like just do google image searches of these like you can look at like the world's tallest roller coasters and stuff where like the peak of it is like all the way up there in the freaking clouds and stuff like i get like dizzy looking at that it's like that sounds terrible some people really love it they love the thrill of it but for me it's like oh my gosh i cannot imagine actually being up there because you, you sit there and you look at the roller coaster itself you're like that looks like it would be fun that's gonna be such a thrill then when you're actually on the thing and then you start going up and up and up and you know they have to do it very slow to build the anticipation right so you're sitting there going slowly up this thing you're like why am i here why did i do this this is no well no 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 you know <laughs> yeah I, I i like roller coasters i like thrill rides as you call them but i'm just not a fan of the spinny ones one of my personal favorites is the one where basically it lifts you straight up like really really high right takes you up really high and you're basically sitting in a chair then they kind of hang you out like up there for a while you're sitting there at the very top just hanging out looking at the scenery then suddenly whoosh they drop you down really quickly that's one of my favorite ones personally but do you want to know what ride is actually like my least favorite ride in the history of rides ferris wheel I hate the Ferris wheel. Why do I hate the Ferris wheel? Because I don't like heights. And no matter what happens, like with the roller coaster, you go up really high, right? And then you go down really quickly. Like the scariest part of it is wondering if the car's like going to come off the track or something like that. You're not really worried about like falling to your death really as much as you are. Like when I'm in a roller coaster, not in a roller coaster, when I'm in a Ferris wheel and they like you're sitting there, they, they park you at the top. Because you know, they always stop the Ferris wheel for a little bit so people can like look at the scenery and take it all in and whatnot. When they park me at the top and I'm in a Ferris wheel, I freaking hate it. You're sitting they're dangling on this thing. You can wobble back and forth in it. You're so high off the ground. Oh, man. Like, like I said, Baltimore is a, it's a park that's around here. It's like 30, 40 minutes away. It's right next to Lake Erie. If you guys know where Lake Erie is. And so we're up on that thing, and like you'll, we'll be like on the Ferris wheel on the very top of it, and like you got this great view of Lake Erie, but at the same time you're so high up. I'm just looking down. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't like this. I don't like heights. It's, it's just something about me. I'm just not a big fan of heights. So yeah, I like thrill rides, but not a fan of spinning. Not a fan of Ferris wheels. Next question, he writes. Dear Nero, I never got to hear your thoughts on Destiny. If you did not enjoy the game, will you be giving it a second chance with the new mega expansion, The Taken King? Love the videos and keep up the great work. Hunter from Washington. So Hunter, I've actually, I think I've discussed my opinions on Destiny or lack thereof many times here on my channel, but I do get a lot of questions relating to Destiny, especially now that I have a PlayStation 4, so I figured this would be a good question to go ahead and answer in this week's Dear Nero. I never actually played Destiny. I've seen videos of it. I've seen 
seen live streams of it, I've never actually went out and bought Destiny and played it. The reason why I've never played Destiny is because it's essentially, even though they keep saying it's not, it's an online persistent, but it's essentially an MMO. It's an MMO FPS, and it's got raids, and it's got grinds, and stuff like that. It's, it's a lot like a lot of other MMO games out there, right? And I'm just not a fan of it because I already have two other MMO games I like. I play Elder Scrolls Online. I play World of Warcraft. They're both pretty fun games. And the idea of having another MMO out there sounds terrible just because MMOs are very time consuming. Those of you guys actually play Destiny, back me up on this. Is Destiny time consuming? It is because you got to farm and you got to do the raids and stuff like that. You got to get your gear up. It, like it's It can consume you. MMOs can do that. And I already have two of them that I really like playing. And like the idea of having a third one just sounds silly. But I think a big part of it as well is, you know, I'm not trying to take a knock at Destiny, but I think a big re one of the big reasons why so many people love Destiny is because it's essentially a console MMO game. And people that have never actually experienced an MMO before, when you first start playing one, you're like, wow, this is the greatest thing in the world. I think Destiny kind of cashed in on that, I suppose, because they were actually to, uh, able to show people what an MMO game can feel like with all these people and the raids and the teamwork and all this stuff that you can do. And at the same time, it's an FPS game. At the same time, it's made by Bungie. Like, it's just like this perfect formula of stuff. I think that's one of the reasons why people love Destiny so much. But yeah, it looks like a fun game. I think I would enjoy it if I would actually play it. But like I said, I already have two other MMO games, plus Call of Duty, plus other games I like to play. I just, I already feel as though I don't have enough time to play the games I already ha do own and like playing. The idea of getting into something like Destiny just seems a bit overwhelming for me. Next question, he is going to write... Dear Nero, why did you start numbering your newest Dear Nero episodes? Henry from Colorado. So Henry definitely knows that over the past, I believe, two episodes of Dear Nero, I started actually adding the numbers to them. Just to kind of give us an idea of uh, what episode we're actually on. And one of the reasons I did that was because when I look at Dear Nero, and there's well over 150 episodes, this is actually going to be... Gosh, what episode is this? I'm actually going to go into my YouTube channel here so I can actually look at the last week's Dear Nero. So last week's Dear Nero was episode 156. This obviously then is going to be Dear Nero episode 157. The reason why I actually started numbering these is because that way it's a bit easier for people to find a specific episode of Dear Nero if they're trying to go back and look for them. While at the same time, it just kind of shows, hey, look how many episodes we've actually done of this series. This is a very long going series that comes out once a week. And, you know, we've done this for 157. Seven weeks. I think that's. I think that's kind of a cool thing. So I'm actually going to go back to all the older episodes of Dear Nero and number them with by episodes. While at the same time, we're still going to keep the titles. Like for example, last week's Dear Nero was Black Ops Three Beta, Competitive Call of Duty on PS4, Diamond Play Button, and more. Like the the topics that are discussed in that week's Dear Nero will still be in the title, but from now on, we're also going to have the episode number in there, which just seems to make sense. Like every series has an episode number, and I thought it was kind of weird that maybe Dear Nero didn't have that. So yeah, we're definitely going to be having. A episode numbers for Dear Nero going forward. Next question, he is going to write, Dear Nero, what inspired you to start YouTube, and do you think that Black Ops 3 is going to sink or save the Call of Duty franchise and this person did not leave his or her name? So to answer the first part of the question, what inspired me to start YouTube? Well, to go all the way back, the first time I ever found Call of Duty on YouTube was I was playing Call of Duty World at War, and I wanted to get better with a sniper because, I, of course, I played uh, with my friends a lot. We would play Search and Destroy, and obviously in Search and Destroy, when you die, you spectate your friends and stuff. I wanted to just get really good at the game to impress my friends, so I looked up uh, sniper tips on YouTube one day, and I ended up finding a video by Hutch. Now, unfortunately, that video does still exist, but he actually has it privated on his channel. He privated all his old World of War stuff. I actually asked him about this on Twitter and he actually replied to me. Uh, he probably did all of that old stuff because it wasn't actually in HD. It was like in 4x3 recorded with like a Dazzle DVC 100. Just very bad quality and just he didn't think it'd be a very good thing to have on his YouTube channel. And that's his reasoning. That's what he said as to why those videos are no longer on YouTube. I mean, they're still there, but he hasn't private it. So I found those videos and I watched these sniper tip videos and that's how I kind of got into it. And from there, you see related videos. From there, you see people that you're watching videos talk about other YouTubers and you look up that other YouTuber and eventually you just kind of snowballed into I was just really really into YouTube and watching all these Call of Duty YouTubers it was like a giant source of entertainment for me and like a lot of people I wanted to do it myself as well you know like a lot of people I'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there that are the same way I, I spent so much time watching people make videos and watching the content that they put together and watching them play the game like hey I could I'm pretty good at Call of Duty I wonder if people would like to watch me the same way I'm watching these people and then eventually you start up your channel and then bam things just kind of snowball from 
there. So that's uh, what really inspired me, I suppose, was just the entire community around Call of Duty and the fact that, you know, all these people, I, I liked watching all these people make videos. I thought, hey, I could probably do that as well. And the second part of the question, do I think the Black Ops 3 is going to sink or save the Call of Duty franchise? I don't think it's necessarily going to do either. Uh, I don't think the Call of Duty franchise is going to sink by Black Ops 3 because by most accounts, by, going by the beta anyway, it's a very good game. The beta has been a blast and I've really been enjoying my time with it. Do I think it's going to save the Call of Duty franchise? I... I don't think the Call of Duty franchise necessarily needs saving. There's so many people out there, so many naysayers to say, oh, COD is dying, COD is dying. Oh, do you realize this year's COD sold less than last year's? It's like, do you realize that it's still selling like almost 20 million copies every single year? Like, a bad year for Call of Duty is a fantastic year for just about every other game out there, with the exception of a few, like Grand Theft Auto and stuff like that. Like, Call of Duty is so ridiculously popular that a terrible year, i.e. Call of Duty Ghost, is still better than most other AAA titles that actually come out. So no, the Call of Duty franchise does not need saving. Perhaps you're getting tired of it, and that's understandable. I'm, I'm, I'll admit it, I'm almost in the same ballpark. I definitely don't have the same drive and passion to play Call of Duty six hours a day like I did back in 2009, you know, because I've been playing Call of Duty for almost a decade now, right? I definitely have been experiencing some franchise fatigue, and so as a result, I play a variety of other games as well. I don't just primarily play Call of Duty anymore like I did, again, back in like 2009, 2010, or whatever, where my day was like, consumed by Call of Duty, like all my free time was Call of Duty, whereas now most of my free time is gaming, but it's not necessarily always Call of Duty. I feel as though a lot of you guys are in the same ballpark. You've been playing Call of Duty for a number of years now, and just because you don't like the current game or you feel as though the past couple of games haven't been as good as some of the games that you started out on, a lot of people then therefore think, oh, well, I'm not enjoying the game, and I'm not playing it nearly as much, so everybody else must feel the same way because I couldn't be wrong, and so therefore the franchise must be dying. That's not the case. That's not the case. The franchise is thriving and just because you're somebody that's been playing the game the series for a very long time and maybe you're not enjoying it as much as you did previously that doesn't mean the series is dying that just means that you're getting bored of something that you've been doing for a number of years now right again i've been playing call of duty for almost 10 years now do i want to play call of duty six hours a day no certainly not i, I well, do i game six hours a day probably most days but do i spend all that time playing call of duty no because i again i've been playing call of duty for 10 plus years now or almost 10 years was it 2007 2008 2009 2010 2011 2012 2013 2014 yeah almost 10 years now right i've been playing for a very long time so there's definitely a lot of you they're probably in the same boat that you've been playing for a very long time and maybe you're not enjoying the game as much as you did some of the previous games that's okay that's natural you know you don't watch you know the first 10 seasons of a tv show and then maybe expect to like the next five seasons as much as you like the first 10 seasons like it eventually you're gonna get bored of it you're gonna get stale or something like especially since call of duty likes to stay true to the same formula every single year of course they change around a lot of things and then with the past couple games we've seen a lot of innovations but they still stay true to that same fps formula maybe you're just getting tired of fps games who knows you know just because you as an individual think the quality franchise is sinking it definitely isn't guys it is really doing well it has been i mean it just gets better and better i mean sure some years it sells a little bit less than the year before but still once again a bad year for call of duty is still an amazing year for just about every other game franchise next question he is going to write dear Nero, i am on twitter a lot and two of the people i follow are you and wildcat how did you guys meet and are you real life friends have a nice day sincerely kenny from massachusetts i get this question a lot believe it or not i think i've actually answered it a number of times as well but I still get the question a lot, so I figured we'll go ahead and answer it here. How did Wildcat and I meet? Wildcat was actually a subscriber of mine back during the Modern Warfare 3 days. He would join some of my open lobbies, and from there, he got on my friends list, and we started chatting, and we've been friends ever since. In fact, last night, I mean, that's who I was playing the Black Ops 3 beta with, was actually Wildcat and some of his friends. We were playing that for almost, like, six hours together or something like that. It was definitely a lot of fun. He's a really cool guy. And all right, Am I real-life friends with him? No. Uh, I haven't actually met him in real life. He lives in Indiana. I want to say that I live in Pennsylvania, so no, I haven't actually met him in real life yet because I don't go to events or anything like that. But no, Wildcat and I have just been good online friends, I suppose, for a number of years now. Of course, he has his own YouTube channel, a very successful YouTube channel. If you guys haven't checked out Wildcat yet, I definitely recommend it because his videos are hilarious. Next question he is going to write, Dear Nero, just a quick question for you. Since you're playing the Advanced Warfare campaign, what do you think the multiplayer would be like if it had multiple types of exosuits like in the campaign and this person did not leave his or her name? So the person who did not leave his or her name, I haven't actually gotten to the point in the campaign where there's different kinds of exos. Of course, there's like the specialist exo, and then like this kind of 
exos. So I forget the names of them. The names of these things always elude me. But there's different kinds of exos, I suppose, depending on the mission that you're playing. But really, those exos just mean you have access to different abilities. Like sometimes you have a riot shield. Sometimes you have the ability to uh, slow down time, I suppose, and take people out. Very, very reminiscent of Red Dead Redemption with the dead eye uh, thing that they would have in that game, where basically you slow down time and made it very easy to shoot and stuff. Like those are just little added bonuses or exo abilities that are in fact in the multiplayer. But I will say, uh, from playing the campaign of Advanced Warfare so far, I, I like seeing the context, I suppose, of of the game. Like it's making more sense. Like when you're playing when you just hop into Advanced Warfare's multiplayer and you just start playing, it's like, wow, this is so much different than like any of the other Call of Duty games. It's kind of weird. Then when you actually play the campaign, it all actually kind of ties in and makes sense. So that's definitely fun. I'm really enjoying my playthrough of the Advanced Warfare campaign. If you guys want to follow along with it, you can do so by going to youtube.com slash nearest let's plays where I'm doing a playthrough of the Advanced Warfare campaign along with some other games right now, namely Advanced Warfare, Hearthstone, and probably going to be doing some other stuff here in the near future. Probably some more custom zombies and things of that nature and of course as new games come out we're gonna be doing a lot of videos of that stuff as well and the next and final question he's going to write dear Nero I have been playing a lot of Titanfall recently and I was wondering what would you want to see in the next Titanfall game personally I would like to see more gun selection and more Titans and gameplay wise I would like to see a full campaign I would love to hear your opinion thanks Nate from Michigan so Nate good news for you maybe you didn't hear about it I made a video on it but not a lot of people watched it because it really seems like people have just lost interest in that game but there is going to be a Titanfall 2 they have confirmed a Titanfall 2 is going to come we haven't gotten a trailer or anything like that we haven't gotten like a release date or anything like that we basically just said yes we're working on titanfall 2 what would i like to see in titanfall 2 just like you more guns more titans that's really it i loved the formula of titanfall i loved the wall running right i loved it i thought it was really cool the, what guns that were in the game they were cool guns i like the fact that for like the first time at least the first time that i played anyway uh you had an online multiplayer shooter game where there was a bunch of ai people those ai people actually affected the game like you had to actually go ahead and kill them they could help you capture flags up i thought that was pretty interesting the idea of titans was very fun i thought it was neat i I definitely thought that was all cool, but again, one of the reasons why I think Titanfall failed, I mean, when I say fail, I mean people like abandon that game and abandon the ship very quickly, is I they just didn't have enough variety. There wasn't enough selection in that game, right? There wasn't enough guns. Uh, when we played the beta, remember Titanfall had a beta, a very successful beta, I might add. Uh, we had the beta and people were playing in there and we thought to ourselves, man, this game looks amazing. I can't wait for the full game to come out with the rest of the guns and the rest of the Titans. Whereas then we found out, whoa, wait a minute, that was that really that was all all the guns like the guns you had in the bed that was that was that was all of them so two two submachine guns that's that's all we need three rifles huh one shotgun huh so that's that's all the guns and like three titans huh three titans like it was it was so it was so just all putting it's like what really this is all that you have in the game so i would definitely like to see you know way more weapon selection just so many more guns that that, that would be amazing i would I'd love to see some maybe some more personalization stuff like camos to your guns challenges for you to there were challenges for your guns of course but uh challenges that would give you different kinds of camos and stuff like that for your weapons i think that would be pretty nice more titans as long as it's kind of balanced because while the, while people say they want more titans it's also kind of hard to balance the fact that what other titans will we really want we have our big tough slow titan we have our medium titan which is kind of tough kind of fast but really not doesn't excel in both then we have our very fast and very weak titan like what other titans would there be i, I really don't know i'd be interested to see if they were going to add more titans to the game as for a campaign i think a campaign would be fun the online gameplay campaign thing was just silly i played through the whole thing obviously but it was not it was it was weird. It, it wasn't very good. So I would like to see a full campaign because I think they have a really cool universe there that they could explore and it can make the game a bit more fun. And just overall, I'd like to see Titanfall 2 be a full game. I mean, let's be honest here. I don't think Titanfall 1 was really a full game. It was a $60 multiplayer only game that barely had any weapons, barely had any Titans. It didn't really have that many maps to be perfectly honest. It's like, yeah, it didn't really feel like a whole game. It felt like kind of half of a game. And with Titanfall 2, I'd like it to be a whole game. I'd like to be a whole game in that there's a multiplayer and there's a campaign. I would like there to be more multiplayer weapons. I would like for there to be more titans and i would like them to remove regen requirements good golly regen requirements it were just so silly making you do specific challenges just be able to do the equivalent of a prestige was silly because a lot of it was just i didn't like it a lot of those challenges were just tedious and not fun and it just made leveling up feel like more of a grind than a fun experience which is obviously something that you would like to fix if you're going to have a prestige based game but ladies and gentlemen that is going to be this week's episode of dear nero i hope you guys all enjoyed it and if you did please be sure to leave a rating where you guys feel the deserves 
once again some Black Ops 3 beta gameplay, and hopefully you guys all enjoyed that and expect a number of Black Ops 3 videos to come out within the coming days. If you guys would like to submit your questions for next week's episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube. To do so, you just go to my YouTube channel, go to the About tab, and from there you see Send Message button. Send your question for next week's Dear Nero if it's a good question and an entertaining question, and above all, a question I feel so would fit well into the flow of the show, then I'll go ahead and feature it, and you will be on next week's episode of Dear Nero. Once again, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Remember to leave a rating. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.